Good morning. Welcome to Truth for Today. This is Dai Qing Yuan, your host and teacher, pastor of Abilene Bible Church. Today we are continuing our study of、um, eyewitness, how to be an effective witness for the gospel. Eyewitness is part of the large series called I Christian, in which we have done pairs of mini series. And we have done. I believe. I confess. I pray. I worship. I fellowship. I give. I baptize. I Eucharist. I study. I obey. And now we are in eyewitness. And to be a witness is to obey Christ's last address to us. He said in the upper room discourse in John thirteen to seventeen that if you love me, you will keep my commandments. And、uh, of course, the last commandment he gave to us is the Great Commission, in which he commanded us to be his witness in the nations, and、uh, to be a witness of Christ, who claims to be the way, the truth, and the life, is to tell others the truth about Christ. And he said, "You will know the truth, and the truth will make you free." And、uh, To be a good witness for the truth, the personal truth, we have to really own the truth. We need to know what we believe, and we need to know why we believe. And today we are emphasizing on one aspect of why we believe. The way to salvation. There are three issues that are. Controversial and、uh, easily mistaken and、uh, severely consequential. One is faith versus works. One is election versus choice. And today we are dealing with law versus grace. Are they in unity or dichotomy? That's really the topic of today. The Bible gives us is. Many passages that apparently portrays the law and the grace in dichotomy. For example, in John one seventeen,、um, the Bible says, "For the law was given through Moses; grace and truth were realized through Jesus Christ." Okay, Moses versus Jesus, the law versus grace. Okay. Moses gave you a requirement, and everybody fails. And Jesus gives grace, and everybody gets forgiven. Now, is that so simple?、Um, was the law given through Moses graceful? Well, the law has a lot of grace in that. Just look at、uh, what God said in the fourth commandment. That、uh, he loves to forgive people's sins and up to a thousand generation, but he will chase the consequence of sin to three and four generations. So which way does he want to be? Does he want to be、uh, legalistic and counting faults, or does he want to be graceful and forgiving and、uh, blessing those? Who have confessed their sins and repented, with、uh, wonderful blessings up to a thousand generations. You see, he loves to bless rather than judge. He wants to forgive rather than、um, punish. That is our God, and the law is graceful. The law gave many ethical commands as well as religious commands, and those who Fail will face extreme consequences, but in the religious part, there is a, a set of laws of sacrifices, and all of those sacrifices are proto images of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, God's standard is high, and、uh, no one can escape. The, uh, the 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 judgment, but on the other side, God is graceful, and He has given us rules of sacrifice, 
And if we are sincerely believing in Him and the sacrifice、um, in the Old Testament times,、uh, which predicts and portrays the ultimate sacrifice, who is Jesus Christ, the Lord of the believers of Him, and we who are in Christ, we are hidden in Christ from God's wrath, and therefore God's wrath will pass through us. Or pass over us as he did、uh, of the、uh, Israelites、um, in Egypt. So that is how the law is. The law is graceful, even in the Old Testament. It gives the way out through the sacrifice, which points to Jesus Christ. And、uh, is the New Testament、uh, all grace and no law, no rules at all? Once you believe in Jesus Christ, you can do whatever you want. Well, no. And、uh, Paul was very clear: if you are antinomian, that means against the law. That means you have never understood, or you have never known God, who is holy and just, and who must punish the sinful. And、uh, if you are in grace in Christ, you are supposed to be grateful. Like the Israelites are supposed to be grateful to God, and therefore、uh, love to obey His commandments, and knowing that they would for,、uh, they would fall short, they would uh, uh, rely on God's provision of sacrifices, and uh, uh, expecting the day when the ultimate sacrifice is given, and、uh, they are all forgiven of their sins, and therefore. Uh, have the hope of being resurrected into the eternal kingdom of God. You see,、uh, the New Testament saints are in a better position than the Old Testament saints. Okay, and the OT saints, their sins were never for,、uh, forgiven. Their sacrifices were never enough. They had to wait for the ultimate sacrifice, Jesus Christ. Their Belief in God and their faithful sacrifices、uh, made them forgiven in the sense that they will be covered by the blood of Christ. But they were not until Jesus Christ came and died and resurrected, and that's when the OT sins were taken by Christ from Hades to heaven. Okay, they had to wait. In the paradise of Hades, and、uh, Hades is kind of like the first level of hell, and、uh, the second level is、um, the bottomless pit for demons, and third level is the lake of fire for Satan and the demons, and、uh, ultimately, and for all the followers of Satan in the mankind. So the first level of hell is Hades, and it's divided into two parts. One part is called paradise,、uh, or Abraham's bosom, as Jesus told the thief who was cru- crucified with him but believed in him. Today, you and I will be in paradise. He's talking about the paradise of Hades, and uh,、um, that place once had a man named Lazarus, the beggar, and who was in. The bosom of Abraham, on the other side of、uh, Hades, separated by a great chasm, is、uh, the prison of Hades. That's for the non-believers. And the rich man, in Latin, is called divus, and but that simply means the rich man. The rich man in Uh, Jesus' story in Luke 16: the rich man went there. He was tortured. He can see. He could see Lazarus and、uh, Abraham, and he could talk to Abraham, but he could not cross over. And、uh, there is no chance of getting out. And he was simply waiting for the final judgment when he shall be resurrected with a body for hell, and、uh, hell he would go. Okay, that is、um, the uh, uh, the fate of the Old Testament saints. They had to wait until Christ's resurrection. But on the other hand,、um, the New Testament saints would be 
with Christ the moment they die. And their soul would be with Christ in heaven immediately. That's why Paul said, I would like to, uh, to be with my Lord. And living on the earth really is not his, uh, uh, his ideal. But he stays here to do the work of the Lord for the sake of the unsaved. And for the sake of the believers who need uh, instructions from him. So we know now that uh, the OT sons had to wait, but the OT sons not, do not have to wait. That's why we are in a better position. And we are already in grace, for we know who the Redeemer is. The OT sons had to wait to know. They, ha they only knew that he would come. He didn't know who he is what his name and what he did and what's the benefits of believing in him. We, the NT sense, already have it. That's great. We are under grace. However, are we free from the law um, altogether? Not only the letter of the law, but also the spirit of the law. Well, the answer is not. Okay? NT believers are indwelt by the Holy Spirit. And if they wish, when they request, they can be full, they can be filled with the, uh, the Holy Spirit and therefore controlled by Him and led by Him and therefore understand the spirit of the law. When we read the Bible, under the illumination of the Holy Spirit, we can understand the spirit of the law. Uh, even though we are not under the letter of the law, we understand the spirit of the law, and we are under the spirit of the law. And the spirit of the law is nothing but to live a life that is grateful to God, therefore love Him, and uh, loving to others, therefore, uh, therefore uh, helping them. So you love God and you love others with the two dimension, and uh, that is a full life. The, the Ten Commandments are the summary uh, of, uh, or the Decalogue is the summary of all of the Old Testament uh, laws. And uh, the Decalogue can be separated into two parts, five for the vertical dimension and five for the horizontal dimension. Okay? Vertical dimension is related to God, horizontal is to others. Okay. The first word of the Decalogue, which literally is ten words, it says, I am the Lord your God who uh, saved you from Egypt, the house of slavery. And that meant to the Israelites, be grateful. That's the command behind the first word. The second word is, you shall not worship false gods, and you shall not um, make idols. And that simply means, altogether, be faithful. Okay? And uh, the third word is, you shall not say the name of the Lord in vain. In other words, you cannot claim to be a believer and live like a non-believer. So the command behind it is, be consistent. And the fourth word is to keep the uh, Sabbath day. And uh, the related um, case laws, they uh, have um, pay, uh, paying tithe, they have observing the feasts, and spring feast uh, is a prediction of Jesus' first advent, the fall feasts are predictions of Jesus' second advent, and uh, um, in all of these uh, um, laws related with Sabbath, uh, what is carried behind it is to trust in the Lord, that you work one-seventh time less than the uh, non-believers, and you still trust that God will provide. You will give one-tenth of your income to the Lord, and you still believe you have enough and more than others. And uh, you uh, trust in God's provision in spiritual salvation in the first coming and second coming of Christ. So all in all, it is to uh, uh, be trusting. And Jesus came, he said, now um, all you who are 
um, weary uh, and heavy laden, come unto me, and I will give you rest. And therefore, he is our ultimate rest. And if we have Christ, we have the eternal uh, Sabbath. So the sabbatical law is uh, not re uh, was not repeated. It was only one of the Ten Commandments that was not repeated reissued in the New Testament. Therefore, it is not applicable to the Christians, and uh, the spirit of the law is to trust in the Lord. And uh, we believe, we give, and, uh, and we rest. Uh, we stop working uh, regularly, one day a week. Not necessary on the Sabbath day, but we should rest one day a week. And, uh, uh, and, and the key is not even stop doing things, although that's included. The key is that day for us, which is the first day of the week, Sunday, is to devote that day in worshiping God, not defined by stop doing things, but defined by doing certain things in worshiping God. So uh, we are in a different place and a better place. And uh, we're not under the letter of the law, but we are still under the spirit of the law. That's the first four words which are relationships to God and uh, they are certainly about the vertical dimension. However, the fifth word is um, honor your parents and uh, the related case laws to this word includes uh, respecting the authorities of uh, the civil authorities including the judges and the kings and the religious authorities including the prophets and the priests. So. Uh, it all starts from respecting the authorities of the parents in the family, then the civil authorities in society, and the religious authorities in the, let's say, the church. So altogether, it is respecting the authorities that God appointed for uh, over you. And uh, we can say the law, the spirit of the law is be obedient. So even though it is about the relationship to other men, but it is related to the authorities appointed by God. So it's still in the vertical dimension. So we can see five of the words are about the vertical dimension, and the five of the words are in the horizontal dimension. So we can say five are the religious laws, and five are the social laws. And uh, the first three social laws are, you shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, and you shall not steal. In other words, you shall respect life, you shall respect marriage, you shall respect property. And uh, altogether, uh, if we respect these three things in that order, life, marriage, and property, and not in reversal, and that is the spirit of the next commandment, the ninth, which says do not uh, um, commit false testimonies, which is do not be unjust. So the commandment is be just. So what is justice? Justice is respecting life, marriage, and property in that order. That's how the biblical uh, laws define the justice. And after justice, the tenth commandment is um, you shall not covet people who have more things than you. And the related case law says you shall be merciful to those who have less things than you, and you shall be fair to people who are equal to you. In other words, uh, you shall be fair. Okay? Do not be jealous of those who have more, be merciful to those who have less, and be fair to those who are equal. So, um, after justice, you have fairness. Fairness is a vague concept. It is not a attribute of God. But God does command us to be fair after we have obeyed the laws of justice, which is the respect of life, marriage, and property. We cannot violate justice for the sake of fairness, and we should not define justice by fairness, as the modern philosophers often do. So that is the spirit of the law, and that applies to us the New Testament sense just as it applies to the Old Testament sense. Okay? They don't have the Holy Spirit's guidance. For them, the law are simply the letters and the words, and they are uh, supposed to obey every word of it, even without the understanding. 
And I really admire the Old Testament saints who are true believers. They really obey the law without the full understanding. And uh, I admire the, uh, the, the psalmist who said, I meditate your law all day long. He's trying to figure out what is the spirit behind it or the ethos, the moral behind it. And we, as a New Testament saints, we have the Holy Spirit. He gives uh, us the understanding, and we understand His Spirit. And we are, therefore, uh, bound by the Spirit of the law. Okay? We are not bound by the letters. And some of the, uh, the, the letters are not applicable to us at all, like the Sabbath law. But uh, the Spirit, like be trusting, okay, still applies to us. And uh, we cannot say that we believe in God and therefore we can do anything that uh, is even uh, violating the laws of God. That's called antinomianism. And if a person is an antinomian uh, saying, oh, now I have uh, said the sinner's prayer and now I can sin any way I want. There's no consequence and I don't have fear of God. This person is never saved. He is doesn't have fear of God. He um, does not love God and he never really believed the holy, just, yet merciful and loving God. He simply believed an idol that will just forgive and then uh, have um, nothing required. Okay, That is a, uh, the error of people who put the law and grace in dichotomy. Okay, The law and grace are in unity. Okay, The law came to re review a graceful God and the inability of man to reach God's standard of righteousness. Therefore, uh, knowing that we need grace. And for those who are under grace, we know that God forgave our sins at the cost of sacrificing His only begotten Son. It is free for us, it is not free for Him. Therefore, we should be grateful to God, being so grateful that we recognize that our old life is dead and we are living Christ's life. And therefore, we should live our life to please Him. And nothing pleases Him more than to live a holy life, which is obedient to the spirit of the law. And uh, we will not live a life that's contrary to the law, uh, neither are we bound by the letters of the law. We are free, yet we voluntarily obey. We are sons of God, and uh, we are heirs of the estate of God. We are co-rulers of the kingdom to come with Christ. We are owners of the household. But on the other hand, like the eternal Son of God, we are happy to become servants of the Father and servants of Christ, our Lord and spiritual husband, and the servants of one another, our brothers and sisters in Christ, and the fellow servants with the, uh, the angels, the holy angels, whom we will judge, but we will serve together our Creator. You see, that is the mentality of the true believers. We are, uh, we are owners, but we are happy to be servants. We are free from the law, but we are happy to obey the spirit of the law. And uh, we are under grace, but we will never abuse grace. Okay. We are grateful because of grace, and we will live a, uh, a law-abiding life. And uh, to, the, to the extreme level and possibility that we can, we know that we'll never be perfect, and we are never saved because we perfectly obey the law. But on the other hand, the law is the mirror that revealed the necessity of grace, the inability for man to save himself, and uh, 
I have seen people who try so good to be good people on Earth, and they are so upset when they fail, and it is so sad when they do not acknowledge that they can never be perfect, and when. They are facing God. At the end, they will have to give accountability for what they have、uh, failed to do, and、uh, what good they do cannot erase the bad they have done, and they will have to give account to God. Without Christ, there is no way we can be. Forgiven by God and accepted into His family and、uh, into His household. So these people may be good people, but they will be lost unless they come under grace. And for those who are in grace and、uh, are not living a holy life, I admonish you: you need to check if you are truly saved. If you are, you would be grateful, and you would love to obey the law, and、uh, that is how law and grace are. They are in unity, not dichotomy. Thank God, Amen. Dear viewers, Truth for Today has served the community of West Texas for over half a century. Those. Who cannot go to church at this time can receive a full meal of biblical teaching to satisfy their spiritual needs. You have been great in making this a viewer-supported ministry. The Bible says, "Those who sow in tears shall reap with joyful shouting." Once you became a partner of our ministry through prayer and giving, we sow the seeds together with Christ our Lord, and we will reap with Him together. When he comes again, recently a regulation from the Federal Communications Commission has made things more complex. FCC has just required that all the programs on TV must be closed captioned with no exemptions. This regulation has put a huge burden on local TV stations and on our ministry in work time and cost. You know that I preach freely by the leading of the Holy Spirit. Based on an outline which I prepared before, now I have to find people to write down the transcript from the video. People have volunteered for that, but in addition, we have to pay one hundred dollars more per episode to the TV station so that they could find a company to put it on the caption. We have considered whether or not this governmental action is a message from God for us to leave the TV. And minister to you through other means. However, we will know the will of God by listening to you. If you speak through increased prayer and giving, we will continue to serve you on the air. Write to us, the TV station, and maybe FCC too. May God have mercy on this country, which does not deserve blessings but depends on His grace. Amen.